Hello traders, this is Orlando for Tradimo and uh, well, welcome to this week uh, or this week's weekly market breakdown uh, and let's start by looking at the news over the weekend, right? Uh, we have the G7 going on right now and um, well, a lot of news uh, from Trump's Twitter uh, for example, Trump says auto tariffs on Japan are staying. Uh, Trump said uh, big trade deal just agreed with Prime Minister Abe of Japan. Will be great for our farmers, ranchers, and more. Really big corn purchase. Okay, if you say so, sir. I want to. I would like to see something signed uh, before you congratulate yourself and pat yourself in the back. White House official says it was a surprise to President Trump that Iran Sadif was invited to G7. Uh, let's see if we have something. Uh, well, I haven't read the news actually. I'm doing this with you guys. Uh, UKPM Johnson says that if there is no Brexit deal, it is certainly true that the, that the uh, 39 billion is no longer strictly strictly speaking owed. Uh, Trump will probably have another meeting with Kim Jong-un. Why? I don't know. Uh, Trump not happy about the North Korean tests. All right. Nothing about uh, tariffs on, um, uh, well, on China's uh, imports. Uh, but let's have a look and that let's uh, let's have a look at what uh, well what happened on Friday. You already know. Uh, well, the um, the White House. Or Trump on Friday announced that he would hike existing tariffs applied to about 250 billion Chinese goods to 30% from 25% as of as of October the first. Uh, he also said a new round of tariffs on 30 billion in goods will be taxed at 15% up from 10%. The first batch of those tariffs is set to kick in on September the first. Uh, well, then this uh, triggered a uh, drop. In every single market, uh, look at the futures. The S and P, the E mini S and P 500, um, down uh, from um, from the highs at around uh, 29.37 to right now um, about um, 20. Well, the low was 28.17. Um, uh, Right now we are at 28, uh, 19, 28, 18. That's about a 4% drop uh, from the Friday highs. Uh, that's quite incredible. Uh, let's have a look at the US dollar from, from, from the Friday highs. Uh, we are down about 1.23%. Um, uh, on the US dollar currency index. Uh, we took some good profits in this run in gold. Uh, we made about, uh, we, yeah, about um, to 50-50, uh, about 3.58% in our long trading goal, which was amazing. But uh, what I want to do right now is I want to look at some key levels that we can be trading off on the next uh, week, right? Uh, this is what we do on the weekly market breakdown. Uh, so why don't we start with gold, which is uh, one of our top instruments to trade well uh i love trading gold uh if you are, are a uh, premium subscriber you already know this and uh, don't forget to uh subscribe to our channel uh and uh, to hit the notification bell uh because i do upload videos every day and you do not want to miss them all right because this is time sensitive i mean trading is time sensitive and um you do not want to miss uh, key levels whenever I post them on our YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, if you are not a premium subscriber, I'm, I'm leaving a link below in the description where you can test driver services for a uh, nice, uh, well, with a 50% discount for only 25 bucks. Now, um, let me show you what we did here. Uh, we just closed uh, the entire position. Um, well, the rest of our position on gold for a uh, for about a 550, 525 pip win, right? Uh, right here we took on Friday we took partial profits at. Um, uh, let me see if uh, I um, uh, the first target was. Uh, let me look at at the uh, trade actually trade idea. We we put on the trade idea right here. 
uh, to with a buy stop at 1497.50 and the first target at 1530. So we took profits right here at the um, red line uh, for a uh, for a nice win, and we just now closed uh, the rest of our position uh, for a nice 525 pip win. So yeah, that's what we do here. But let's have a look at what I mean, what to expect in this um, in this nice. Uh, well in this market all right so uh, uh, first of all I want to go to the weekly chart and the reason that I want to go to the weekly chart is because of this uh, because of the weekly chart is where I find uh, my key levels uh, if you are uh, a um, yeah a premium subscriber you already know that red lines on my charts are uh, very important historic levels of support and resistance and uh, green lines uh, green horizontal rays are uh, immediate levels of support and resistance. All right, this is how I draw my chart. Now I used to I used to use magenta, as you can see on the bottom of my chart, but that's a thing of the past, guys. So let's go to the weekly. All right, let's go to the weekly chart. Uh, yeah, we have. I mean, gold has been on a tear, uh, and as you can, as uh, you already know, we have been uh, just. Um, breaking with key level after key level I'm sorry about that after key level I'm sorry uh, let's just uh, restart um, so we have been breaking key level after key level after key level and right now we are uh, we just broke with some massive 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 uh, in my opinion some massive base right here at the 1530 this i mean this is the main reason that we took profits at the 1530 uh and we were only going to be taking profits at the 1530 but because of how strong this moving gold was i decided that we could take partials off and uh just uh, wait for uh another push higher uh, we got, um, we double up our position. I mean, uh, the first one, I think we took out about 250 pips uh, and two, and uh, the second one, 525 pips. So that's a nice win. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, let's have a look at where we are right now. All right. Now, this is the level that I will be looking at next for a uh, target to the upside. Um Let's uh, just color it red because this is some very important historic uh, base. Not as important as the 1530, apparently, because, I mean, the 1530 base, if you look closely, uh, well, this is a level that was tested as resistance here and held as support for, for a while. I mean, uh, for over a year, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a look. I mean, we broke it right here on uh, April 12, uh, 2013, and it first uh, was tested as support at on September 2018. So more than um, more than a year, uh, this base held, and um, the now the level that we are going to be looking at is this one right here around the uh, 15. Uh, uh, 75 and uh, uh, yeah I know that we could have um, uh, well we could have let uh, the rest of our position ride until we hit this level because uh, this uh, well the 17 uh, the 1570 to 1575 level is going to be the next target to the upside uh, for bulls and uh, but uh, I mean we had a good I'm sorry we got we had a good profit uh, going on in our trade and um, uh, because this move is news driven and this is the main thing guys uh, let's go back to the four hour chart uh, we already have our our next big level to the upside but because this is new a news driven um, a news driven uh, move and when I say a news driven move, this move to the upside is driven by a drop in the uh, US dollar. You can see uh, right here uh, on my chart, the US, uh, US dollar currency index has have had a, a well, had a, tra a, 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 a horrific Friday. Uh, and that move to the downside is what uh, impulsed uh, the move or the bullish moving gold, which we capitalize on. 
uh, well, and uh, and uh, because of this, and because how strong the Sunday open was, is that I decided to take profits um, uh, early, right? Uh, but in any case, we are still going to be looking to buy gold, and um, where what what I'm looking for is a continuation of this move higher, right? I mean, the mo the strong bullish move in gold is um, well, you can't argue against it, and uh, I'm looking for a test of this uh, 1570 level and a retest of the bullish structure right so basically what i'm looking at uh or what i'm seeing is yeah we started with this bullish move then we started to chop inside of this triangle and now we have uh move uh well we have broken to the upside and we uh, and what i'm looking at is a test of this level the 1570 that we already saw in the um well in the uh uh, in the weekly chart that it is our next level or our next target to the upside uh, and of course a uh, retest of the bullish structure uh, for a uh, possible buy dip right here for uh, when price retest the 1530 as support so this is what I'm looking at all right or this is what I'm expecting okay now let's draw some Fibonacci uh, retracement levels I want to see if we have some Fibo clusters around the 1570 and the first thing we're going to be doing or we're going to be drawing is the Fibonacci retracement of the flag okay of the flag of the triangle so let's go and uh, let's have a look at some levels um, uh, let's grab the 161.8 ah that's interesting so let's uh, put it on a on a brighter blue and a thicker blue think uh, it'll be better if we thicken this out so uh, this is crazy right uh, the 161 percent retracement of uh, the um, of the uh, triangle is right there where we took profits all right I didn't even I didn't even notice but uh, fifths don't lie and uh, well it's crazy how how ratios do work so let's continue let's uh well this is the 161 percent retracement of the flag uh, of course we're not going to have uh, a um i'm sorry at 223 uh we have a 223 right here at the uh 1570 okay uh so these are the retracements of the flag so basically what i'm looking or what i'm saying guys is that uh we uh well we, we move to the lows and then we retrace back a hundred percent 161.8 percent and i'm expecting a retracement of 223 percent of this triangle all right we are no longer in this short term um long position in gold but we are going to still be looking to um well to uh buy around these levels when uh, of course, uh, we hit that 223, um, 223 um, uh, retracement of the triangle. So um, big levels in, in gold, big moves in gold. But let's move on. All right. Uh, let's have a look at another market. Um, this is going to be very interesting, a very interesting week of trading. Uh, there, I mean, I see a lot, a lot of opportunities. Uh, if you don't know uh, who Matthias is, Matthias is our coach, and and uh, this is uh, this is a trade that he made. Um, well, this is a trade that he made on Friday. He shorted two contracts of of uh, Nasdaq futures right around. Well, exactly. Let's see exactly at uh, 7708.64.7 right uh, he shorted right here where the um, well where the um, arrow is and uh, well he was up around uh, six sixty hundred uh, six thousand five hundred dollars on Friday when he shared this with us but look at how the uh, Nasdaq futures have opened right uh, this is the no. This is the pound versus the yen. I'm sorry, guys. Um, this is the Nasdaq 100. Uh, right. This is the NQ uh, futures. 
uh just i have a look uh, i mean uh, how they open this is a huge gap to the upside down 1.48 percent uh right now uh where we closed on friday at 79 well we closed on friday at 79 at uh, I'm sorry, 7490.50, and we opened right here at our key level, and uh, this is what I was telling uh, our subscribers on, um, well, on uh, on Friday that this was a, a very important level for us because not only was the previous lows right here, but it was a, a zone of high volume. But we opened right at the at the, at our well at our level and. Uh, price just slammed down uh he's making a healthy profit right uh and he is one of uh, our two coaches that share um well uh trade ideas on futures and options so let's move on let's and let's uh well congratulations Matthias, and let's have a look at the euro versus the u.s dollar all right so the euro versus the u.s dollars i mean uh uh we had a um a long position uh, that was triggered last week sadly we did got stopped out when uh, we got haunted uh right here on these lows uh and we may and we lost uh 30 pips but that's fine i mean we more than made it on the uh, uh well on the um uh on gold so what i'm looking here is this this was a very or this is a, a very important level again i need to change my colors because visually uh red is for long term levels uh, and uh, this is something that i do i don't know if you guys do it but to me it's very important to differentiate uh key levels from long to short term okay uh all right so basically uh what we have here is a break above that uh 11 uh, the one uh 1.11 level on the euro us dollar uh which was uh, well this uh this uh uh, this was a very very high volume zone let me just show you I'm going to put on a volume profile for you um, and uh, just have a look at exactly the level that uh, where the point of control is all right it's exactly there so what are we going to be looking for let's have a, a, a let's look at uh, uh, a larger um, that's exactly what I want, wanted to look like at a larger um, volume profile okay now uh, this is very interesting okay now because what I want to look at is uh, exactly the volume of uh, this entire move to the downside okay so uh, I'm going to replace my volume profile because I want to look at the volume uh, or I want uh, the indicator to calculate the volume of this move all right I'm not interested in the volume above this key level above the 112 level all right i am not interested in that volume because i'm looking for key levels uh below that so uh let's move on let's move our uh volume profile to uh exactly where we broke below and uh, as you can see here is where we are at right now um right now we are testing some key levels i mean uh this is where we closed on friday you can see that we closed right at the point of control of our, uh or where the high volume is being traded remember that uh, uh point of controls are very important to us because uh this is where uh, uh massive volume has been traded in the past and this is probably where um big orders are placed okay so uh, those those levels are very difficult to break with so that's why we use them as targets okay and as you can see on friday uh well price just went um uh well broke with the 111 level and uh just stopped right there at the point of control uh not very much going on on the euro versus the usd uh, remember that this move to the upside on the euro versus the US dollar is also driven by the massive drop on the US dollar. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, why don't we ha have a look again at uh, that? Oh my God, just look at that open on the uh, US dollar currency index. 
uh, the US dollar currency index is up 34%. Uh, wow. Uh, well, let me let me put on the uh, 50 minute chart. All right. So uh, yeah, very. Uh, I know this is very low volume, but if you look, um, if you look at where 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 it opened, uh, let me see. August 23rd. We are August 25th. It opened right here. Uh, at 97 57 so big gap to the upside on the US dollar currency index so basically what I'm looking at uh, is a possible recovery of the uh, uh, or a pullback to key levels uh, on the euro versus the US dollar now let's go to the four hour charts to look for some key levels and I'm going to start deleting a lot of the th uh, a lot of the things that I have on this chart because uh, well I'm no longer working with them okay now uh, um let's delete this and uh, as i told you i mean uh, uh i used to use magenta on my lines uh well back and as you can see i mean levels do hold for a long time i mean key levels do hold for a long time um uh but let's have a look at what we have right now okay so basically um, this is the or 9710 level. The 9710 level is where we bounce once already at a at a at a Sunday open, right here. And uh, we, well, we didn't quite get there, but uh, I do feel that with this gap to the upside, we could have a rally to the 98 level. So uh, basically, we'll be looking to do this on the uh, U.S. dollar currency index now. If uh, the US uh, dollar rallies and that's the main reason we also took took profits on gold okay uh, because we we wanted to um, well capitalize on that strong open so basically what we want right now uh, or what we're looking at is a uh, pullback in the euro versus the US dollar so big big base right here historic base and a big level of resistance again here so basically what uh, we're looking at is that key level the 1160 level uh well the 1160 to uh, to 1180 uh, remember that key levels are actually zones not just uh, horizontal lines you can't look at price action like that you have to look at it as uh, uh well as zones and our key zone right here is between the 1160 to 1180 so that's a 20 pip buffer this right here is our key level this 20 pip zone right here is our key level so what i'm expecting basically is a pullback to that 110 again uh so uh, a um, an overnight pullback to find the price of the euro us dollar again here where we could have an excellent risk to reward scenario to buy the euro versus the us dollar this is interesting because uh, if and that is a big if if price drops to the 110 uh, to the 111 I'm sorry is because we are going to have a rally on the US dollar and uh, we are going to be able to have an excellent risk to reward scenario for a possible break above that thick zone um, uh, with historic I'm sorry historic uh, uh, volume and uh, our 20 pip area of resistance so this is what i'm looking at on the euro versus the us dollar uh let's move on let's have a look at uh, the dollar versus the swiss franc now uh let's again draw some levels here i'm going to get rid of this fib or this fibonacci uh retracement levels um these are the levels that we were working with last week um uh they didn't quite quite uh, held uh, but that's fine because uh, uh, we are, are not uh, well we don't take we um, um, actually we almost never enter at market we need a break below key levels if we're going to go short and that break didn't happen so no we, we were flat on the uh, US dollar versus the Swiss franc and uh, right here where um, where the drop on the US dollar happened of course uh, the the US dollar versus the Swiss franc broke with uh, uh, well with uh, with our wedge formation now um, 
let's uh, find some key levels right here on the US dollar versus the Swiss franc. Uh, again, um, very important levels uh, that were hit before that drop. But what's important to notice is that we have hit again that 97.10 level. The 97.10 level uh, is a very important level for us because not only is where buyers are found or were found in the past again and again and buyers protecting that area and again you can see by this open that here is where buyers are stepping in that uh, uh, we might have oh um, I mean we don't have a buy opportunity that's um, beyond reason but um, it is uh, the key level that we are working with and uh, uh, in my humble opinion uh, I won't be touching this currency pair this week uh, even though that we are uh, in nice uh, 100, 100 pip um, well a hundred pip um, range I won't I won't be touching it now the uh, one of another one of the other uh, currency pairs that I love to trade is the uh, British pound against the Japanese yen. I love that Gepi. And um, well, again, uh, we were trying to uh, to uh, to trade this uh, short opportunity um, again, but because of Brexit news, the price broke to the upside. That's fine. So right now, what what to expect? Where price is going? So uh, pay attention to that. Uh, to that big uh, mm, open uh, with a yes, massive 70 pip. Oh, let me just thicken this chart out for you guys. With a massive 70 pip um, gap to the upside, I think, yeah, gap, uh, 71, no, yeah, around a 70 pip gap to the upside. Price dipped, uh, well, price dipped um, uh, from the open to the lows for um, a dip for 50 let's say 60 pips so again a uh, big dip and uh, what we or what I will be considering is a play of that um, of this level again I have to change the color because it's short-term level I don't know why everything is mixed and I apologize for that but the 129.50 level is the level that I want to be playing off not only because this is where countless times we have seen sellers again guys key levels matter key levels gives you the uh, correct uh, or the, not the correct but uh, focusing on key levels gives you the best risk to reward scenarios for a high probability trade so what am I going to be looking at I look at I look this as a fake out. What is a fake out? With that simple, uh, price was inside of this um, range between uh, at 300 pip range. That's a big, big range. And uh, as you remember, we were looking at price inside of this triangle for a drop and a retest of the 126.50 level. Well, that didn't happen. Already told you that. But what I'm looking at is a well right now. We are, we are, we are, we are, uh, or prices reacting to the 128.17 level. All right. Short term buys. And again here, short term buys. So we are reacting to this level. And what I will, will be looking for is this a retest of the 129.50 level for a nice, uh one two four risk to war scenario maybe i mean uh the the, the thing is that uh this fake out gives i mean gives us a not so good risk to reward scenario uh, because if you want to be really safe with your shorts, you're going to have to put your stops above the previous high. But I don't think I will be using that. I don't think that uh, I will be using that. And it all depends, guys. It all depends on the reaction that we have. Because, let me think on the chart out for you. Because if we go, uh, I mean, if price goes again to test this level, and... Uh, uh, and we find again these kinds of reactions. The uh, stop loss that I will be using is the the, the highs 
on on the rejection candles that will give me a great risk to reward scenario again i will need a break below some key levels that i will point out on the premium channel if this scenario plays out but this is what i'm going to be looking at a uh, possible sell to a to a real retest of the 126.50 with a um, maybe first targets at the 128.20 uh this is definitely on my radar uh for next week let's move on um uh what should we look at right now let's have a look yeah i mean uh the us dollar canadian dollar is not that i mean um super chop as you can see horrible price action we're not going to be looking at I'm sorry at that market, uh, uh, but let's have a look at the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. All right, so the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. Um, uh, right now, uh, the yen depreciating against the US dollar. Well, immediately, of course, we are moving up. That means that uh, the yen is, is uh, uh, depreciating against the dollar or the dollar appreciating because the yen same thing but let's have a look and uh, let's work on this chart together guys so we have this uh, 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 short-term base right here uh, level that I mean that uh, uh, if this gap is closed uh, we might have a play to uh, to the downside but that's uh, not that's something that uh, that I'm not convinced just yet because we just started working with the chart uh, and uh, well sometimes I'm going to be doing this live with you guys because I want you to see how I uh, actually um, work my charts not only I mean uh, uh, some uh, um, uh, 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 some of the time I'm going to have a clean chart and I'm going to work the charts with you but most of the times I'm going to have uh, the uh, charge already worked um, before the uh, before the show. So let's go to the four hour chart uh, instead of just zooming in. And let's get rid of this um, uh, levels. OK, so uh, big, big, big levels uh, that we are working with. And uh, to be completely honest, I mean, we just broke. Uh, I don't know if we broke. Well, let's have a look at uh, this candle. Uh, this candle. Uh, I think we have it. We have the lows. Uh, well, reacting to that lows. I mean, that was a clear buy uh, at the open. I don't usually trade on Sundays. I actually never trade on Sundays, so what I'm going to be looking at is for a short opportunity, but I don't see any clear, uh, well, any clear opportunities. And I would really, really hate to do uh, uh, to trade this move. We are, I mean, we will be shorting at such lows, at such historic lows, uh, that uh, I mean, to me, is uh, completely uh, out of my. Um, system rules and uh, once you start uh, breaking those rules where uh, you're doomed so nothing nothing going on for me on the US dollar versus the Swiss franc um, let's have a look at Bitcoin shall we I know that some of you love to trade uh, cryptocurrencies so we're going to have a look at Bitcoin too all right so Bitcoin BTC USD um, we were looking at Bitcoin last Friday, and uh, of course that we—I I think that actually uh, we already have a chart of Bitcoin. On um, uh, let me load uh, another chart layout that I have the secondary, because I do think that we have Bitcoin uh, worked out. Uh, we already have our well, I already have my levels, and uh, we're going to have a look at the crude oil too. All right, so uh, let's have a look at Bitcoin, and um, oh, let me just um, refresh my volume profile to uh, um, to the end of the of the chart. Uh, nothing going on in Bitcoin. Again, uh, we are still chopping around that point of control, zero completely and zero directionality in Bitcoin, and uh, I continue to um, to look at the at the immediate downside in this cryptocurrency 
uh, and a retest of these lows. And the level that I'm looking for uh, for a buy is the 9380. Uh, let me just correct that. Um, uh, uh, well, the uh, this line 9380 level is the level that I'm looking for a buy. Um, again, big, uh, big, big volume being traded at uh, at current levels. So, uh, of course, that uh, I am looking for a push down, some kind of a reaction here. So let's uh, let's start again. Um, we are chopping around the point of control. So I'm looking for a move down some kind of a reaction for a nice uh, bull or a nice buy in Bitcoin. So the key level that I'm looking for this week in Bitcoin is the 9380. Yep, the 9380. Um, let's have a look at, um, well, silver also big push to the upside. Uh, the Euro Aussie, oh my God, I mean, we did miss this one and uh, uh, that one hurt uh just have a look at this chart i mean uh the setup was so clear but um we did miss that um um this breakout right here great risk to reward scenario on this trade uh it was a missed opportunity uh but again you can't win them all you can't take them all sometimes you're going to miss some and there's nothing you can do about it but as again Again, just uh, have a look at where we or our, our where buyer stepped in. I mean, this is what I do. I look for high quality zones, big volume zones, uh, where big buyers are stepping in. I look for breakout zone formations. I mean, what I do is simple, guys. Very simple. If you want to join me, again, just go ahead and uh, I'll leave you that link uh, below the um, video. But I do think that the, I mean, uh, this is about it for this week's weekly market breakdown. We have gone through some uh, very important uh, markets. And uh, again, if you are a premium subscriber, I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you are not, I'll leave you that link below uh, this video. Uh, so you can test us out for only 25 bucks again after that it's only 49 dollars a month uh, you could have made a year worth of uh, subscription with this gold trade alone um, but I cannot make you uh, take that decision into profits all right so uh, for trading more this has been Orlando and uh, for you premium subscribers I'll see you on the inside